I made a video a while back on how to make an air assist for lasers and this guy commented on it asking what if we use CO2 as an air assist. That question kept running in the back of my mind and that's when I remembered I had an expired fire extinguisher in my shop that needed refilling so why don't we use it to test this theory out. But before I can do that, I need a design to test. I'll draw a square and change the corner radius to get this shape. This will show how it looks when the cut lines get close. I'll also engrave a square around the design for reference. We'll also do a circle within a square box to see how accurate the cuts are. So we have the design. We'll be running it on this piece of pine. I think it's about five millimeters thick. So yeah, around five. But we'll first run it using regular air so that we get a good reference on uh, for comparing how it turns out with CO2. So I have my air coming from my shop compressor here and I have this contraption over here. So if you want to know what this is and how I use my shop compressor as an air assist for my lasers, I have a video on it. I'll link it in the description. Let's connect my compressor to this. So yeah, so that's good. I'll turn this thing on, set 15 PSI, yeah, that's good. I'll place my piece of sign over here. Yeah, we have the air going over here. So what this does is, it takes the air coming from my compressor, regulates it and sends it through this pipe to my laser head. So now let's go back to light burn and we'll just click frame. And um, yeah, that's working. Now I'll click start. So here's what we got with regular air. Let's discuss this later on. We'll keep it aside for now. Now, here's my extinguisher, AKA CO2 for this project. Now it has this coupling, but I didn't have anything that I could connect to it. But I looked further and found this thing over here, this connector over here. Uh, it has an, it has a half inch thread and that goes inside the half inch inlet of my regulator. So let's take this apart and hook it up. Now this thing is totally unsafe. So don't try this at home. So we have hooked up the regulator with the extinguisher. Nice. Now this is the end that goes into the laser, but I don't want to do that now. I just want to see first what comes out this end when I turn this on. So I'll take the safety off first. Yeah, the safety is off. Let me turn this on slowly. Yep, we have, and I'll turn my air resist on. Yeah. Yep, I have something coming out. So yeah, this could work. And I don't see any powder or any anything else coming out this end. So I think it's safe to put it into my laser. So I'll hook this up. I'll turn this back on and set the pressure to 15 PSI. Okay. So yeah, we can do that.
so this is what we got uh, I didn't quite get the result that I expected I thought there would be a bit more difference between the two so this one was done using my sharp air compressor and this one was done with CO2 uh, there is a little bit less smoke stain on the top surface of this piece that was done using CO2 uh, but I wouldn't say there's a significant difference over here so I thought I'll switch this up and I'll be using a 10 millimeter pine now so for the, for the first test we used 5 millimeter pine so this is 10 millimeter pine and we have also switched the machine this is the Xtool S140 watt I am using this because this has a smaller part size when compared to the Xtool D1 Pro that I used for the first test so let's do the sharp air compressor first and then we'll do the CO2 So that's how the test went down. Sash and I were also shooting emails back and forth and he mentioned something interesting about how the outlet of a fire extinguisher runs all the way to the bottom of the cylinder. When you open the valve, what you're actually getting is liquid CO2 coming out. He suggested flipping the cylinder upside down to just let the gas escape. But by the time I read his email, I had already used up the extinguisher. Reflecting on my setup though, it turns out the liquid CO2 was getting caught in the first stage filter and boiling off into gas. By the time it reached my laser nozzle, it completely turned into gas. So I guess it all worked out in the end, no harm done. I could have run some more tests, but I ran out of CO2, but I think we have what we need. What I thought was that the CO2 would prevent the wood from catching on fire and that it would give me a cleaner cut. I ran the CO2 and the regular air assist at almost the same pressure and we got slightly cleaner cuts with the CO2, especially on the top and bottom surfaces. But when you look at the edge finish, I don't see much difference. I also didn't find any differences in the number of passes you need, so I think the efficiency was not affected. Now, Sash also shared with me the results he got. The cuts on the right side was done with CO2 and it definitely looks cleaner. Here are some more images he shared. A special thanks to Sash for sharing these results, insights and for putting this idea into my head. Coming to the question of whether you should switch to a CO2 air resist, well, there is a marginal improvement in cut quality, but I don't think the extra effort and cost produces a proportionate quality difference. So in my opinion, a regular air resist is good enough. Tell me in the comments what you think. If you want to join in on more laser related discussions, jump into our Facebook group. I also run a free weekly newsletter. It's like a weekly magazine for lasers. I leave the links in the description, do check it out. So that was all about using CO2 as an air resist. If you found the video interesting, please click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please support the work we do by subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be waiting for you in the next one.